Hey everyone, this is Kai. I'm just waking up. Um, and it's Saturday morning here in the Midwest. And it's fucking really cold. <laughs> it's been cold here for, I don't know, like the last three months. And for the first couple of months, it was like kind of cool. And now it's kind of getting old. And um, it snowed a lot this winter. And so I'm just feeling kind of under the weather. Uh, so this week's topics are mottos, themes, and s- s- hi bow. Mottos and themes that we live by, and things that we like about ourselves. Ugh. So, <laughs> um, I like talking in the morning because my voice is deeper. Because it like hasn't deepened that much, but it like sounds really cool, and that makes me happy. So. Mottos and themes that I live by, which I think some of the examples were given always be nice or stay positive. um, Those aren't really things that I live by personally. Um, So there's this thing that you sometimes hear and it goes, it, it says that the things that we regret are not the things that we try and fail at, but the things that we never do. And that has been really true for me most of my life. When I was 18 years old, I decided that I was going to go to school for police science because that made sense, because I could make money doing that, because maybe I would make a good police officer, Um, and also because I was afraid to pursue writing because I knew that I was going to fail, and I knew that like somewhere deep down inside I was not good enough, and I knew that people were going to find out, and so I just decided to take this like safe route right? I needed to take the safe route. But I hate the police. <laughs> I mean, and I hate the criminal justice system. And and the entire time I sat in those classes and I had nothing in common with those people. Um, and I all I thought about was how I, how bad I felt for not pursuing writing. Like, ouch. How how, how shitty it felt and how I felt like I was living a lie and I beat myself up more. And that was like what I regretted not pursuing the thing that called to me. Um, and like, that has been a theme for most of my life being trans. I knew, I knew in my heart, right. That I, that I was trans when I was six years old. And I told my mom that I wanted to have a sex change operation when I grew up, you know, but it was like some somewhere along the line, society had beat my ass so bad that I had that I decided to fit into the parameters that I was quote unquote supposed to, um, and I became afraid to pursue and to live my truth and my reality because I was gonna fail at it because it wasn't gonna be good enough because 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 you know whatever, um, and now I'm older and I'm just like fuck it. So motto I live by fuck it. If I fail, I fail. I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be alive. And at least I tried. I don't have to live in regret for the things that I never did. The truths that I never pursued. So that's one. Um, the other one, and this is something that recently came to me, is instead of trying to do the right thing, it's more important to protect myself. Um, and I learned this the hard way recently with this roommate situation that I had where And I've mentioned this in other videos. Um, I moved in with somebody who I'd lived with before. I didn't know she was experiencing substance abuse issues and, you know, like a, like a, essentially a mental breakdown. She became really abusive, especially surrounding my trans status. Um, And I wanted to be a good person and I wanted to give her time to move out and I wanted to treat her with respect, even though she was, you know, saying things that were verbally abusive and even though she was breaking my shit and putting my cat outside and you know you know I mean it ran the gamut I wanted to be the good person and that cost me and there were people around me from normative society who weren't having experience who don't have experience with this they were telling me to be the good person and telling me to to be understanding and that cost me and so I can be a good person all day long But self-preservation is really important, especially when you're a marginalized person, especially when you're considered a freak and people aren't going to 
want to protect you or people aren't going to understand what you're going through because it's a very specialized experience. Um, and I need to understand that as a marginalized person that I'm not operating under the same conditions as most people. And I need to treat that accordingly. Um, and I know that sounds really cynical, but it's just true. It's just what has happened. Um, and maybe as I move on, I'm, I'm moving from the Midwest and moving to Washington, right outside of Seattle. Um, and maybe as I move on to different communities, my experience will be different. Um, but for now, I, I, I feel like self-preservation over some sort of like blatant morality will suffice. Um, man, I have the best cats. So... Things I like about myself. Hmm. I'm always looking in the mirror and I'm sizing up my body and I'm trying to figure out what changes and what isn't. And I, sometimes I have bad days where I feel really bad about myself, like physically and emotionally. And I'm just really good at putting myself under the Petri dish. And so taking ownership of those things that are that I feel good about um, is really important to my mental health. And I must say that I really like my lips <laughs> physically. And they're the, like the spaces in my body that I like the most that like feel the most masculine. Um, I have nice arms. Um, I used to, I used to really like my bone structure, but now I don't know what I think of it. Um, my tattoos look really good. <laughs> So there's a few things that I like physically about myself. Um, and oddly enough, when I was, before I was medically transitioning, I seemed to like things more, but that's because I got a lot of, like, validation from society around me about, like, looking so, like, feminine and pretty. Um, and I, now I'm going through this, like, weird puberty stage, and I'm, like, not sure where my body's at. And so it's hard for me to say what I like about myself because I'm, like, changing and it's, like... I'm in a, I'm in a limbo, but there are still things that I appreciate. Like I'm forming muscle mass, and I really like that about myself. <laughs> um, uh, intellectually, I am a talented communicator, and I have great social skills. Um, and people seem to respond to me well. I've been told I'm told on a regular basis I have a presence in a room, which is really nice because I can use that for good to like communicate um, and just kind of like spread an agenda, like, spread an agenda that promotes, I'm sorry, I'm just waking up, um, I don't know, I just want to convince people to open up their mind, and accept all genders, and if I have a presence in a room, and people tend to listen to me, and they enjoy my diction, then I'm more likely to be able to persuade them, and so it's something that I really enjoy. Um, you know, I'm super intelligent and that is something I'll take ownership for all day. Um, and I move through space and society with a sense of awareness about who I am, my privileges, uh, the way that I'm oppressed, the way that I oppress other people. Um, and it's like, I don't play into this societal narrative. And I try to really push against conditioning. And I really love that awareness about myself. And I don't think it's something that a lot of people have. So now that I've made this unwieldy video, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Um, and um, cool, man. <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs>